What's up guys? My name is Brandon. Welcome to Quick Flicks. Today, we are covering Happy Death Day, directed by Christopher Landon, releasing in 2017. Landon is quite a notable director, directing films such as the sequel to this film, Happy Death Day to You, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, and Freaky. On top of that, he's also written some other notable titles, such as Paranormal Activity 2, 3, 4, and The Marked Ones, Viral, and Disturbia, which if you're wondering, I will definitely cover someday. Happy Death Death Day follows college sorority girl Tree, short for Teresa, who gets stuck in a similar premise to that of Groundhog Day, getting continuously murdered on her birthday, but keeps waking up to find herself at the beginning of the day. She can't seem to stop reliving the same day, and obviously getting sick of it, decides to do some detective work, attempting to solve her own murder. Happy Death Day is a ton of fun, and definitely one to watch, so let's stop chatting and get to the movie. The movie opens up with a bell tower ringing at the top of the hour, waking up our protagonist, Tree, who's in a dorm room after a long night of partying. And judging by her ringtone, it's her birthday. Although in the trailer, they used End the Club by 50 Cent, which they definitely should have kept, but couldn't due to not obtaining the rights. Good guy Carter introduces himself to her and gets her Tylenol for her hangover headache when his friend Ryan busts in. I that fine vagina or what? Tree gets on out of there and walks through campus, where we get many reoccurring details that are throughout the movie. Creepy peeking sunglasses man, stop global warming petitioning lady, kissing couple getting soaked by sprinklers, car alarm, and some frat dude singing causing one to pass out. She then runs into a guy named Tim, who's curious as to why Tree hasn't answered his texts after one date. I mean, who takes their first date to Subway? It's not like you have a foot long. She then gets back to her sorority house, Kappa Pi Lambda, where her roommate Lori gives her a birthday cake, but... <laughs> Oh, that's rude. During the house meeting at lunch, snobby head leader sorority girl, Danielle, criticizes Becky for her high calorie lunch, causing her to run off. But she runs into Carter, spilling her entire tray on Tree. Carter's there to return her bracelet, but Tree don't care, and gives him a death gaze as he walks off. Later that day, Tree heads to the campus hospital, ignoring her dad's calls and bumping into Lori, who knows what she's there to do, and pleading her not to go do it, as there could be very serious consequences. Too bad Tree just needs some action, and starts to get it on with her cheating professor Gregory, until his wife interrupts the show, knocking at the door, and judging by her facial expression, she probably knows what's going on in there. Later that night, Danielle is telling Tree not to be late to the party, when they experience a rolling blackout. So Tree heads on to the party by herself when she crosses paths with a group of college kids, one of them turning around, staring her down, wearing the school's mascot baby mask. However, she doesn't notice, and continues on until she reaches a tunnel, with a birthday music box in the middle. She walks toward it, and turns around to see the mascot baby mask person. This freaks her out, and she threatens to call the police, which seems to work. She walks off when the music box starts up again, and out pops the killer. She runs away, but trips and falls, the killer catching up and stabbing her. She suddenly wakes up to the bell tower ringing, Carter introducing himself, and her dad calling her. She experiences some major deja vu, Carter noticing. Ryan busts in once again, but she pushes past him. Walking through campus, she experiences all the same details I pointed out earlier. She gets home, and has another chance to eat Lori's cupcake, but sets it down due to being late to her class. She later goes to Gregory, trying to talk to him about the deja vu, but he has other ideas, until his wife once again shows up. Later that night before the party, Tree watches a video of her mom pushing her face into her birthday cake. Danielle walks in, telling her not to be late to the party, as they have a rolling blackout once again. Tree assuring she'll be there on time, heads on out, and crosses paths with that group of college kids once again. However, this time, she turns around to notice the killer staring right at her. She disregards it and continues on until she gets to the tunnel with the music box in the middle. That's a big nope for her and she turns around to leave, taking an alternative route to the party? She walks up to the door when it opens unexpectedly, the baby face killer revealing themselves. Oh, nope, it's just Nick. They threw her a surprise party. Tree apologizes for the punch, but Nick seems to be into that kind of thing, subliminally leading her into his bedroom. Once she arrives, he introduces her to the pleasure dome, dropping the disco ball and busting them moves. Tree, uninterested, texts Danielle, while Nick gets stabbed to death right behind her. She finally attempts to walk out, but sees Nick dead on the ground. The killer then pins her to the bed when a frat dude walks in to save the day. 
never mind that. The killer grabs a bong, breaking it and stabbing her with it. Tree wakes up gasping for air, freaking Carter out. Tree panicking, realizing she's reliving the same day, runs out of the room past Ryan and out onto the campus, going through the same events once again. She gets to her house, telling Lori about what's going on, attempting to convince her by telling her that she knows about the cupcake and the surprise party later that night. She even tells her the most important of all, Lori just thinks Tree isn't feeling well, and recommends staying in for the night. Tree takes this advice, boarding up her windows and barricading her door. Before eating the cupcake, she looks for the remote, cause no one likes to watch trash. Okay, okay, I'm just joking, don't get mad at me. I'm sure Teen Mom is a pleasant watch to most. You know what, next video, we're gonna be covering Teen Mom seasons 1 through 9, and Teen Mom 2 seasons 1 through 10, and Teen Mom 3 season 1? In 75 minutes, don't miss it. While looking for the remote, she finds a black envelope containing a birthday card with a threatening message in it. This, with a combination of the TV randomly turning off, spooks her out. She gets her nifty hammer and starts checking around the room. When the baby face killer pokes out from right behind her, stabbing her to death once again, Tree wakes up screaming, even spooking Carter out. She has a bit of a mental breakdown, as expected, and sprints out of the room. Noticing all the same events going on, she spins in circles going crazy when Carter shows up with her belongings that she left. She asks for help, and the two go to lunch together. Carter tries wrapping his head around her situation, and does his best to help, giving the solution to keep dying until she solves her own murder. We also find out why good guy Carter is good guy Carter. For the record, I didn't take advantage of you last night, okay? I slept on Ryan's bed. You were wasted last night. You know, I was afraid you were gonna fall or choke on your own vomit like Janis Joplin. This leads into our fun montage of Tree repeatedly dying while trying to figure out who's doing the killing. She creates a list, writing down prime suspects, and crossing them off after confirming they're not the killer. Seems a bit weird. I mean, why write it down if the paper's gonna disappear every time she dies? If she's already memorizing it, what's the point? Anyway, she finds out Tim is gay during the process. She also finds out Danielle has the birthday card with the threatening message, Tree fighting her, leading to both of them being hit by a bus. I'm not really sure how that makes Danielle safe, and no longer a suspect, but oh well. After being hit in the head with a baseball bat, she wakes up not feeling so well. She passes out in Ryan's arms, and awakes to Carter by her side in the hospital. The rolling blackout occurs, and Gregory shows up right behind him, spooking them out. Suspicious Gregory. Gregory sends Carter on his way, and describes to Tree that she should technically be dead due to the extreme trauma inside her body, thus allowing to conclude the damage from these deaths are actually causing her bodily harm. Tree requests a drink, Gregory saying, of course, girl, then taking the opportunity to sneak out. She heads to Gregory's office, taking his car keys, and finding the baby mask, Tree believing he's the killer. She walks out and finds Gregory, but before she can even accuse him, the killer comes from behind and kills him. She runs to the parking garage attempting to hide when she beeps the car, alerting the killer. She luckily makes it in before getting caught and drives off. Speeding down the highway, all excited and whatnot, she gets pulled over. The officer asks if she's on any drugs due to her odd behavior, Tree realizing this is a golden opportunity to get locked up and be safe from the killer. She lies and says she's on all different kinds of drugs, the cop handcuffing her and throwing her in the back of his car. He then suddenly gets run over, killing him. The killer then rolls down the window and drops a birthday candle and a stream of gasoline coming from the cop car, blowing Tree up. She awakes once again and walks through the usual chain of events, Carter following her, making sure she's okay. They go out to the diner chatting, where Tree farts. <coughs> and also ignores a call from her dad once again. She goes on to explain how her mom and her share the same birthday, and it was one of the most special days, that is until her mom passed away. So ever since, she's just been avoiding her dad. While chatting, she notices a news broadcast explaining a suspected murderer of six females and one cop, John Toombs, who is being treated at the campus hospital. Tree recalls seeing his room and quickly heads there to put a stop to this madness once and for all. She grabs a fire axe and enters the room to see a cop dead and John Toombs in the baby mask shooting at her. She runs out and the nurse gets caught in the crossfire. Tree gets to a dead end where Toombs takes off the mask. He gets ready to shoot her when Carter comes out of nowhere and tackles him. But the fight doesn't last too long as Toombs breaks his neck and kills him. This gives Tree enough time to find another exit. Toombs follows and enters the bell tower when Tree hits him from behind. About to kill him, Tree remembers Carter 
and she decides to hang herself instead. She wakes up in a fantastic mood, thanking Carter for saving her life, being cool with Ryan calling her fine vagina, and walking through the park, signing the Stop Global Warming petition, alerting the couple to move before the sprinklers go off, laying a pillow under the frat guy as he passes out, and even telling Tim that she knows he's gay, and to embrace it and be open. No need to hide it and pretend you like girls, just be yourself. She arrives at her house and apologizes to Lori for being a terrible roommate, then going to Gregory and ending their little relationship, creating some bad blood between the two. During lunch, Tree brings a huge tray of food to make Becky feel better about her food selection. That doesn't stop Danielle from being a douche though, and she gets what she deserves. Carter shows up as usual, and Tree finally gives him a big ol' smooch and the two set up a date. Aw, cute. Later, Tree decides to show up to meet her dad, and they have an emotional talk about her mom. Tree apologizes for avoiding him, and the two share a special bonding moment. That night, Tree prepares for her battle with Tombs, and shows up to take the cop's gun, and tells him to go get help. She walks into the room to shoot him, but the safety is on, and the two battle. Tombs takes her to the ground, when Tree's watch starts beeping, signaling it's time for that rolling blackout, mother heckas. And she takes advantage of this, getting the gun and showing up from behind him when the lights come back on. She then shoots him and kills him. Yay, she finally did it everyone. To end off the night, she's back at her sorority house, celebrating with Carter, emulating the final scene from 16 Candles. Everything is all well and dandy, and the movie ends with her blowing out the candle on Lori's cupcake she made her. Just kidding, she wakes up again, freaking out, not knowing what to do. She runs home and starts packing her bags, telling Lori she's leaving and going as far away as possible. Lori, trying to comfort her, offers her the cupcake. Tree says no thanks, as she already ate it last night, but quickly realizes she died in her sleep via poisoning from the cupcake. She puts the details together quickly, figuring out Lori used Tombs as a scapegoat for the murder. Lori denies the allegations, so Tree decides to take it to the police station. On her way out, Lori snags her by the hair and pulls her down, confessing to it, saying her motive was Tree being a terrible roommate and banging Gregory. Lori being a bit jealous. Anyway, let's get to the action. They start wrestling. When Lori gets on top of Tree, Tree grabs the cupcake and smushes it into her face, then proceeding to kick Lori out of the window and falling to her death. <sighs> Good ol' revenge. Later that day, Tree meets up with Carter at the diner, where they do some flirting, and Carter compares her situation to Groundhog Day. But Tree pulls a little rock. You know, your little scenario reminds me of life. Groundhog Day. The movie Groundhog Day? With Bill Murray? Who's Bill Murray? And the movie ends. Nah, Carter's just joking. He confirms she finally made it to Tuesday the 19th. She gets lovingly upset, but they kiss it out in front of a sick They Live poster. Tree got lucky and got herself a good one, and the movie actually ends this time. However, there is an alternate ending. Tree wakes up in the hospital to her dad and Carter by her side when the doctor asks them to leave because she needs rest. The doctor then walks out when a nurse walks in and starts pumping an unknown substance into her IV. She takes off her surgeon mask, revealing to be Gregory's wife. This kills Tree and she ultimately gets stuck in another time loop, this closing the alternate ending. This was the original ending, but test audiences absolutely hated it, forcing the team to create the theatrical ending we have today. Next week, we'll find out the backstory as to why Tree kept reliving the same day, and what exactly caused it, when we cover Happy Death Day to you. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you thought of this film down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.